the Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyer USS Stetham DDG-63 recently demonstrated expansive maritime domain awareness, utilizing flex rotor unmanned aerial vehicles during operations in the Gulf of Oman. The UAVs, part of U.S. Naval Forces Central Command's Task Force 59, put highly capable intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, or ISR, capability in the hands of sailors at sea. Flex rotors' high endurance and vertical takeoff and landing capabilities make them particularly well suited to the task of building an accurate maritime picture, said Captain Colin Corridan, Task Force 59 Commodore. Our warfighters require innovative methods for gaining a deeper understanding of the operating environment, Corridan said. The ISR capabilities of these UAVs greatly expand our sight picture and help us better monitor what's happening in the region. Flex Rotor is the most advanced Group 2 Small Tactical Unmanned Aerial System, or STUES, with vertical takeoff and landing, or VTOL. U.S. and Allied forces can use it day or night for a diverse range of intelligence, surveillance, target acquisition, and reconnaissance, or I-STAR, on land and at sea. The unprecedented combination of small size, large payload range, economy, autonomy, and basing flexibility of flex rotor is without peer. It is designed for the demanding reliability and specifications required by the U.S. DOD while being cost-effective for commercial markets. Flex rotors can help protect military bases and other important assets by detecting unusual and threatening activity, as well as explosive devices. Imagery captured by flex rotor can be viewed in real time so that any actionable threats can be addressed immediately. It can also be used for a variety of other government uses, such as security operations and law enforcement. A steerable, zoomable imaging turret on flex rotor performs search and target tracking with a daylight or infrared camera. Video imagery can be viewed in real time and in subsequent reviews on network displays, Wi-Fi devices, and smartphones. If desired, multiple flex rotor aircraft can be managed from a single operator station to monitor several sectors simultaneously. Boasting a flight endurance of more than 30 hours and a 120-kilometer communications range, this all-weather aircraft has operated in some of the harshest conditions on Earth. Flex rotor is excellent for expeditionary missions. Needing only a 20 foot by 20 foot area for launch and recovery, it takes off, lands vertically, and easily transitions into horizontal wingborne flight. The Stuess flies completely automatically after takeoff, with no pilot intervention needed. Flex rotor quickly assembles for flight and can be boxed and stowed in minutes by a single person. Flex Rotor provides complete autonomous flight following takeoff with a wide communications range and the ability for around the clock ISR coverage. US and coalition partners can use it day or night for a wide range of intelligence, surveillance, target acquisition, and reconnaissance operations over land and sea. Flex rotors played an integral part in recent operations where they integrated with 12 different unmanned platforms for manned-unmanned teaming operations, tracking Iranian Navy and Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps Navy, or IRGCN, ships and small boats over several days during routine patrols in and around the Strait of Hormuz. The operations aboard Stetham built on the strength of that operation, Corridan noted. The sailors aboard Stetham and from Task Force 59 are strengthening maritime security and stability through the use of flex rotor, deterring malign activity by bad faith actors, he said. As these capabilities expand, we're going to be able to gain more information more quickly to be able to make faster, smarter decisions. Moreover, U.S. Naval Forces Central Command, or NAVSENT, also continues to advance lethality at sea, 
utilizing the Freedom Class littoral combat ship USS Indianapolis LCS-17 as a staging base and command center for a host of unmanned systems during live weapons firing exercises in the international waters of the Central Arabian Gulf. Digital Talon 2.0, the second exercise of its type in as many months, showcased manned unmanned teaming by meshing together Indianapolis, three unmanned surface vehicles, and an unmanned aerial vehicle to create a single common operating picture in what is known as a mesh network, providing targeting data to all stations taking part in the exercise. NavSense Task Force 59, the Navy's first unmanned and artificial intelligence task force, partnered with Indianapolis to demonstrate the ability of unmanned platforms to pair with traditionally crewed ships. The manned and unmanned teams identified, targeted, engaged, and then destroyed simulated hostile forces at sea, represented through the use of a target boat. This second iteration of Digital Talon continues building on our earlier success, said Captain Colin Corridan, TF-59 Commodore. We keep progressing toward fulfilling NavSense priorities of deterrence and de-escalation by demonstrating live firing from a tight, manned-unmanned teaming model. In multiple firing events, a T-38 Devil Ray unmanned surface vessel or USV equipped with a lethal miniature aerial missile system successfully scored direct hits on the target boat each time. As with the previous Digital Talon exercise, a human operator ashore at TF-59's Robotics Operations Center made the engagement decisions. Digital Talon 2.0 took a significant step forward, Corridan said, noting the results from this event have proven these unmanned platforms paired with our manned combat ships can enhance fleet lethality. In doing so, we are strengthening regional maritime security and enhancing deterrence against malign activity. The U.S. Naval Forces Central Command, U.S. 5th Fleet's area of operations, encompasses about 2.5 million square miles of water area and includes the Arabian Gulf, Red Sea, Gulf of Oman, Gulf of Aden, Arabian Sea, and parts of the Indian Ocean. This expanse, comprising 21 nations, includes three critical choke points at the Strait of Hormuz, the Suez Canal, and the Strait of Bab al-Mandeb. 